First, I'd like to welcome everybody tonight. Uh, on behalf of the Regional Council, I'd like to thank you all for coming out virtually to attend our meeting. And we know that you have plenty to do on your plates and other things that you could do on a wonderful Thursday night. So we appreciate your time coming out and joining us tonight. Um, before we get started, we'd like to uh, go over a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, the first is, is that all participants are going to be muted by the host. And we ask that you please use the chat box to ask questions and to interact throughout this meeting. Also, since this is a public meeting, uh, we are recording tonight. And we're recording so that way uh, other people in the future can view what we talk about. And there may be some posts on social media and other platforms. So we ask that because we're recording, that you refrain from using any type of um, sensitive or private information. And just keep in mind that we are recording, and so this potentially this could go anywhere. Also, um, we ask that you please keep your comments uh, appropriate. Um, it is at the discretion of the meeting facilitators to remove participants at any time in case um, things go off key. So, as one of the first things we're going to do tonight in the chat box, if you could tell us your name, the county in which you live, and then we thought about, since we're living in unprecedented times with COVID, many of us have relied on using technology to connect with friends and family and maybe connect with the people at work. And we know that technology definitely has its challenges. Uh, sometimes the internet doesn't connect right. Sometimes applications crash. But we also know that for those of us who are spending time at home, sometimes our furry friends, members of our family, can make unexpected guest appearances while we're trying to communicate with our friends, loved ones, and maybe even coworkers. So in honor of our furry family friends, we'd like you to talk about um, what kind of pets that you may have. And if you don't have a pet, that's okay. You can tell us what kind of pet you would like to have. Um, and since I'm the one who's uh, leaving this meeting tonight. Uh, we'll start, I'll start by saying, my name is Sean Campbell. I am on the Regional Council and I live in Powhatan, Virginia. And yes, I have uh, two pets. Uh, we have a rescue, rescue beagle. Uh, she's a geriatric beagle named Darby. And we have a rather large beastly cat who's pushing 20 pounds. She's a Maine Coon cat. And, um, both of which have uh, decided that they want to introduce themselves at the most inappropriate times, whether it be through barking or just simply jumping up on the keyboard and resting while the camera is on. So if you would, as I said, introduce yourself and the county where you live and feel free to talk about your pet and maybe a quick story if you'd like to share about how they've crashed um, your virtual session. Okay, so my, my name is Jan Richter. I'm on the regional council and I don't have a pet. We used to have a dog and like, I hope that at some point we will have a dog again probably a, hopefully a retriever or some family friendly, kid friendly dog. So, so and I'm sure that he, he or she will be crushing everything that, that she, he or she can crush. <laughs> Ann Williams from Henrico has a calico cat. And Ann, I'm from Henrico too. Um, I'm Renee Soniat, and I have a one-year-old golden doodle. His name is Teddy, and he is full of energy and no crazy mishaps because he is so full of energy that during the day when we're working or if we're having webinars like this or meetings virtually, he stays in the kitchen. He is quarantined. <laughs> Otherwise, he will be all up in everything all the time. So, um, we have a lot of people with no pets. 
So if you would like to have a pet, what kind of pet would you like to have? And Tamara, I hope I'm saying your name right. You have a Shih Tzu. And we have Angela Petit from Fredericksburg, a 12-year-old Multipoo and a two-year-old Golden Retriever. Amy from Chesterfield has a Golden Retriever. Ernestine, no pets. Jamie from Richmond has a yellow lab. And an Oliver cat, is that the name of a type of a cat? Oliver cat? They just sleep. <laughs> and Christy, I'll let you uh, share yours. If you're able to unmute. Yeah, so I have two black cats. I have a, a theme. I have two black cats and a black dog. <laughs> um, but my dog especially, she loves to bark at whomever comes to the door at whatever time of day. And even if I'm in the middle of a work WebEx or Zoom meeting, she will just bark to her little heart's content. So that makes things exciting for working from home. <laughs> I bet it does. And Jackie would love to have a bunny. Oh. So thank you for indulging us, everyone. <laughs> all right. Yes, thank you all very much for sharing. Um, we'll briefly go over tonight's agenda. So we're going to start with an overview of what the IFSP is. And then we'll do a very brief overview about the Center for Family Involvement. And then we're very excited to have a presentation on Transition University, the who, what, where, when, how, and why by Tammy Burns, who is a family support specialist for uh, PC. And then we'll move into our IFSP business in which we'll talk about our October event. And then we'll begin sketching out some plans for our November meeting. So, what is IFSP? Well, IFSP is the Individual and Family Support Program, and it is designed to assist individuals who are on the waiting list for the Developmental Disability Waiver Program. And it operates under the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Services, which affectionately is known as DBUDS. And so they oversee the IFSP program. Now, when many of us think about the IFSP program, we think about IFSP funding. We think about the fiscal or financial aspect of it. But the IFSP program has other components. Uh, one of those other, those other components besides the finance are peer mentoring, where IFSP is providing opportunities for peer-to-peer -peer activities, family mentoring, in which the IFSP program is providing opportunities for family-to-families to get together, and also support for community action, so through community coordination. So these are other aspects that IFSP has in addition to just the financial piece. So there, it's, it's, it's got multi-layers to it. And the IFSP council are individuals um, who are parents, and we all have a child with a disability. Uh, we're all volunteers. And at, the time, at this time, our council is, consists of, of members here on your screen. Uh, I'm the host tonight. Uh, my name, again, is Sean Campbell. Uh, that picture is kind of the mid-pandemic uh, when I was quarantined in the house picture. Um, we also have Jen uh, Krusky, who is on our state council. We have Aubrey Lucy, who is a state alternate member. We have Jan Richtar, who is on the central council. And Christy Sanford, who is also on the central regional council. And starting October 1st, we'll be accepting applications for those people who are interested in serving on the council. So if you are interested starting October 1st, please let us know.
We'll also talk briefly about the Center for Family Involvement. So the Center for Family Involvement works with families to increase their skills as advocates, uh, mentors, and leaders. So families, children, and young adults with disabilities can lead the lives they want. Um, they provide a variety of things through direct services, training, technical assistance, and information to parents of young children and adults who have, disab who have disabilities. And so they serve as a navigational support to families. And we are um, happy tonight to have our CFI person. And so I'll let Renee talk a little bit about who the Center for Family Involvement is. Thanks, Sean. Um, so as he said, my name is Renee Soniat, and I work for the Center for Family Involvement at VCU, which is part of the Partnership for People with Disabilities. Um, <clears throat> I'm the Regional Network Coordinator in the Central Virginia region, um, so there are others like myself who work in other regions of the state, uh, and we are a very, very closely connected group of people. We have, um, not only are there other regional network coordinators like myself, we also have a lot of cultural uh, liaisons and um, people who have various specialties in, in the disability field. So working with um, people who are blind and have visual impairments or deaf and hard of hearing. Um, we have a mental health liaison. So it's a very diverse group. Um, and although we are spread out, we are very, like I said, very closely connected and we work well together. And um, so we, we contract, we're all grant funded. So we contract with the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Services and also um, Virginia De Department of Education and um, the Department of Health and um, there are some other grants that we work under as well, um, Maternal Child Health Bureau and some others. So um, we, uh, but kind of the, the heart of what we do is try to support families and get them connected with family navigators who are trained to assist them with um, emotional supports, um, system navigational support, and um, resource sharing. So that's kind of it in a nutshell, and thanks for giving me that little spot. All right, thank you so much, Renee. And now for our feature for tonight, uh, very excited about our presentation on Transition University, the who, what, when, where, who, what, when, how, and why. Um, tonight's presenter is gonna be by Tammy Burns. Tammy Burns was born in North Carolina and moved to Virginia as a teenager. She received her BA from Virginia Tech and elementary education. Tammy, I'm a fellow Hokie. I'm sporting the uh, maroon tonight. Go Hokies. Yes, go Hokies. Uh, Tammy began her career as an elementary school teacher in Chesterfield County where she attended many IEP meetings as a teacher. Then in 2000, in the year 2000, when her middle son, Jared, was diagnosed with autism, Tammy experienced IEPs from the other side of the table. Because of this, Tammy then decided to go back to school and pursue her master's, Master of Education and Curriculum and Instruction degree with a concentration on autism spectrum disorders from Arizona State. At this time, she has been involved in many leadership positions with the disability-related nonprofits and has served on several local and state stakeholders and advocacy groups. Tammy also graduated from the Virginia Partners in Policy Making Program, where she developed a very successful IEP boot camp for parents as her project. Tammy works as a family support specialist at PTIC and her specialty area is transition to adulthood. Tammy is passionate about empowering individuals with disabilities and their parents, guardians with the knowledge and tools that they need to be successful advocates. Tammy and her husband, Troy, live in Melothian and have three children, Brett, Jarrett, and Amber. In her free time, Tammy enjoys spending time at the beach, 
going on motorcycle rides with her husband and reading suspense novels. So with that, Tammy, I'm going to stop sharing and turn and hand the baton over to you. Sounds good. Um, it's really weird sometimes to sit and hear someone read read your your bio and go, really, is that me? Um, thanks, Sean, for that. I'm going to share my screen and um, you guys let me know if that doesn't show up the way it should. Um, but as Sean uh, shared, uh, my name is Tammy Burns and I'm a family support specialist at PPC. And I'm excited tonight to be able to, to virtually share with you guys some information on one of my favorite, if not my very favorite thing that I get to do at PPC, which is Transition University. So um, I'm gonna run through, uh, my plan tonight is to run through a few slides to talk to you and give you some, some of the basics, the who, what, when, how, and why. And then um, I'm going to actually stop sharing those slides and actually go into the Transition University um, information and show you guys that online. I'm not going to show you all of it, but I will show you pieces of that just so you can see how that looks. So um, I will start, um, as everybody was kind of doing an overview, I'm going to start and give you an overview of PTC, a very quick one, but just so um, if you're not aware of who PTC is and what we do and, and how we're connected in the state of Virginia, um, to give you some information on that. So let's see if we can get this to move forward. There we go. So PTC is a statewide nonprofit, and I usually right there like to say designated nonprofit because um, we are actually designated in IDEA, special education um, law, designates or requires that every state has a funded, uh, federally funded parent training information center, otherwise known as a PTI. And so um, PTC is Virginia's PTI, Virginia's uh, IDEA mandated parent training information center. And we have been Virginia's PTI for over 40 years. Our passion, very similar um, passion uh, that I share with Renee, I know is uh, to empower families of children with disabilities in Virginia. And our central focus is on families who are navigating the special education system or disability services systems in general, like Medicaid waivers or Social Security or those types of things. We do have some very specific um, targeted outreach areas as well that you can see listed here um, with staff tied to each one of those um, to make sure that they are getting done well. So you can see bullying awareness, early childhood, family engagement, Latino outreach. We do have bilingual staff. Um, we have a military outreach program and the transition to adulthood, which is where, as, as Sean shared, that's my, my kind of piece of the pie. PTC is across the state. We have offices, um, you can see here listed um, where our offices currently are. We serve the entire state of Virginia. We do have a main office in Springfield, but I work out of the Richmond area office, um, actually in Chesterfield County. And we have families, uh, we have staff uh, in each one of these areas as well to serve the state of Virginia. So I always like to say this is my slide of what, what do I do on a daily basis in general, at least anyway. Um, I spend a lot of my time on the phone and our staff does as well and on email talking to families from around the state of Virginia. And it's, it's been especially busy over the past few months, as you can imagine. Families have a lot of questions around IEPs and school restarting and and even transition services and adult services during this time and how, to, how they're working and what to do and what happens when you don't agree and all of those things. And so families call us at PTC and um, we take time on the phone with them to help, help give them um, information. And our goal is to not do things for families, but to empower them to be able to do those things um, and be their child or be their own self-advocate. We also work directly with students. Um, I, I work a lot with middle school and high school students and, and stu uh, people who have left high school but are not quite 26 and doing a lot of um, direct services with them as well. And so we do the phone, we do email, we do Zoom face-to-face um, -face as well if we can. That's been a little tough here lately as you can imagine. We do, uh, we've always been doing webinars. I would say, I always like to say we were virtual before pre, before COVID, but um, we, we have, we do webinars and trainings, uh, whether it's our staff or whether we're bringing in speakers to do that. We also do workshops across the state and we are, 
currently um, starting, we have started back in July doing some in-person things, very small, very socially distant, um, but some in-person trainings as well, which is exciting to me. Um, we do some big statewide trainings and, and when we do those statewide trainings, if let's say we, we did one in July in Roanoke and a parent wants to attend, but they live in um, Chesterfield. And we, what we do is our grant allows us to not just provide the training, but to provide that family with a hotel stay, with um, mileage reimbursements, and with food while they're there so that it is accessible to people around the state. Um, our services in general, um, all the services I've talked about for families are free and confidential. We do not charge families for services. We don't charge them to look at their IP and, and go over that with them or anything like that. Um, we do, uh, the one thing I love uh, most on our website is our fact sheets. We have about 50 or so, maybe more, one pagers front and back um, that talk about a very specific topic and we do it in a, a, a very family friendly way. We try to avoid uh, research based language and those kinds of things and really talk to families on a conversational level about a specific topic. So we have a fact sheet on um, Medicaid waivers, for example, that we hope is very understandable. That was our attempt to make it um, very understandable. We have fact sheets on extended school year services and any kind of topic you can imagine in the disability world, we probably have a fact sheet on that in English and in Spanish. And so um, I do encourage you to check those out on our website if you have a chance. Or if you have a question, you can always email us and we can help, to help direct you to that. We are a part of a larger entity. So there, as I shared, there's a PTI, a mandated PTI in every state. Some states split that up and have multiple PTIs. As you can imagine, Texas is a very big state, so they have um, multiple ones. Um, but again, PT is Virginia's PTI. We are a part of that network, which is really fun and awesome because uh, when COVID happened, you know, it didn't just happen in Virginia. And so we were able to partner with PTIs across the nation to develop some really strong resources to help families start um, around that. Um, and you can find some of those on our website as well right now. They um, come and go depending on where we're at with COVID, but um, we have a great, for example, uh, back to school guide for families to, it's a worksheet, workbook kind of guide where you can go through and, and figure out what kind of questions and what kind of information you want to bring to your IEP team, IEP team uh, meetings. Uh, finally, on this one, I will just share just some really exciting news that I'm very excited about is just this week, PTC found out that we have uh, been received a grant to become uh, what I call Region B1, uh, what, what is called Region B1's um, transition-based PTI. So we will not just be providing transition information and resources and help to parents in Virginia, but in all of Region B1, which is Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida as well, and working with them to help them build up their supports for families in those. So we're excited about that opportunity. Um, but anyway, tonight you guys came to hear about Transition University, which I said um, is, is my favorite piece that I get to do uh, at, at um, PTC and really enjoy uh, the activities and the, the interaction I have with families across the state through that. So I'm gonna start and I'm gonna share some stuff with you guys about the basic facts of Transition University. So I'll start with the what. First of all, Transition University was created by PTC in collaboration with the Virginia Department of Education. So the Virginia Department of Education helped um, us get this started and, and help with some funding for that. The goal was to provide high quality transition information and really to help improve student outcomes across Virginia. It is online. It was online you know, before COVID. It still remains online. It is uh, the way this one is specifically set up. It is like most of our, um, as I told you about our fact sheets, for example, it is very parent friendly. It was developed and the information that's provided in this, in this, um, in this course, I call it, is extremely parent friendly. That doesn't mean parents are the only ones who participate, but it does mean that that was our audience in mind when we created um, and we still cr continue to create things for Transition University. It is self-paced. So, um, you know, in this world today, you synchronous and asynchronous. It is asynchronous in terms of you do not have to sign on at a very specific time. 
and um, families have really appreciated that over the course as we've gone through. Each um, transition university it, um, has five sessions in it. It's a five session course and each session has video content, written content, and discussion opportunities. Um, it has audio, it has visual, and we try to bring in as many um, learning modalities as we could to help families uh, really connect to the information. These are some of the topics that you'll see covered in those five sessions. Um, it starts off with really a basic, what is transition? What do we mean when we say transition to adulthood? And why is it really important to know that? Then we talk about, um, we start into the school system and talk about transition services in the IEP and go through a lot of things around uh, transition assessments and why they're important and, and what different types there are and, and how, to, how they get used to make a plan. Um, another session is on decision making and it is, um, so we cover supported decision making, power of attorney, guardianship, age of majority, but also that financial uh, future planning and decision making around special needs trust, able now accounts, and letters of intent. We have speakers who are experts in their field talk about um, those different things and, and then we pad that and, and cover that around with um, additional information to make sure that we are providing a very rich environment of information around those topics. Um, at the end of Transition University, the last couple of sessions, it's really about um, not just about that planning that we started in the beginning, but really about connecting. And so we talk about transitioning into independent living, um, employment, further education, housing, transportation, Medicaid waivers, social security, um, and then really talking about how to, not just that, but how to connect with your community and be a part of your community as an adult with a disability, and how to connect to those adult services in a way that really is meaningful. Um, there's so much in it and it's so um, exciting. We continue to add to it and, and take things away if they're no longer relevant. Um, we close, Transition University opens for a certain amount of time and then we do close it and a lot of people are like, oh, don't close it, leave it open. But we really do intentionally close it because we find every time that there is information that has gone out or needs to be updated. And so when you get into a transition university session, it is up to date and it, is, it has the most up-to-date information that we have when we opened it. Um, we make sure that all the links are working. If it's a resource page, we make sure that link is still working and, and all of those things so that it's as up-to-date and as reliable as it can be. So here's just some stats and when Transition University began in spring of 2019. And you can see here, I'm not gonna read through all of these, I'll just pick a couple. Um, the first time we offered it, uh, we had 161 people registered and about 85 people completed the entire thing. Um, sometimes we'll have people who sign on, you know, and, and don't get a chance to complete it. As I said, we do close it. Um, it's open for, there are five sessions and we leave it open for seven weeks. Um, and so sometimes people do not finish for one reason or another. And um, as, we, as we've gone on, you can see the numbers have grown and the number of completers have grown. And um, I think it, it continues to have more and more people who hear about the opportunity and uh, share it with others. It's really a big word of mouth as how, as how this thing uh, most people find out. Um, we are open right now for registration for our fall session and registration open in August. And the, the class, this next one will start on October the 11th, which I'll come back and share that again. But um, it is, is open for registration right now. I share who, uh, let's talk about who for a minute. I did share that it is targeted for parents and guardians. Uh, participants overall, it's, the average is about 80% are parents or guardians and 20% are what I would classify as educators or providers or professionals in the, in the disability area. We have had um, parents of elementary school, middle school, high school, adults. We've had self-advocates attend. We've had grandparents be a part of this. It really is open to everyone and um, overarching people say, it was helpful for them, Depend, and it doesn't matter kind of really where their, their niche is in, in this disability world. We do have people attend every time from all regions of the state, from far Southwest Virginia, 
up to um, Winchester in Northern Virginia and uh, you know, out into um, our coastal regions as well in Central Virginia. And I shared, um, but I'll state it again here, that the presenters are subject matter experts from around Virginia who um, can speak to their subject and talk about really how to connect to the service that they're talking about. So you'll see DARS, VDOE, ARC of Virginia, Centers for Independent Living, um, elder law firms, and adult self-advocates participating as well. So the next few slides I'm going to share just some things that have been said by people who've taken the course because I think I can talk about it all day and say how great it is, but um, I think it's really important to hear from people who've actually taken it. And so what I put here is, is word for word. I have not corrected any spellings or anything like that, but I wanted to put word for word what people have said. Um, this first one is a, is a professional, an educator, and she says, um, I think it's a she, might be a he, I have been in one professional role or another in or closely related to special education in Virginia for more than 40 years. This presentation was one of the, probably the most complete and on target resources I have accessed during that time. I will be using the transition information immediately with my current caseload of students and families. I also will be recommending this transition university course to my colleagues across the Commonwealth and in DC, Maryland and West Virginia. Although I realize the states function differently, it will help them know what to look for and ask for. Thank you. Now, I will point out that we do have people outside of the state of Virginia take it. This course is Virginia specific, but a lot of the information as this person shared can be used in other states, um, but we do target it specifically for people in Virginia. Um, one family shared this cor the course designers, which, um, yay, that's part, I'm part of that, did a great job organizing information and resources in a way that made the content accessible so that I could better understand what is relevant to our family situation. I'm used to receiving a lot of information at once as a standard workshop PowerPoint presentation and finding it difficult to determine what's relevant for our case. I really appreciate the care that went into this course. Thank you. Someone said, DD waivers have been a topic of several discussions with my husband. And finally, I have some answers. I needed to know about SSI versus SSDI as we need to apply for this now. I appreciated the mother and son discussion, which uh, the son was a self-advocate, about figuring out her son's interests and needs to help build his future. They presented some ideas and resources I had not considered. Just a couple more. Special education is not easy, and a good deal of the content of this course is similarly not easy. I took the course twice because the content is so important. It clarifies so many concepts and entities I've run into but not really understood, and it does so in a very clear and understandable way. The sessions were not too long or too short. I think they were a good length. The links were all up to date, which is quite a feat. Um, I was worried about what would happen when my son gets older. I know I, I now am armed with more information to make an informed decision. That is our outcome that we wanted to see. Um, that's um, so excited to see that from families. While attending this course to gain information regarding caring for our minor child, I also found some valuable information that should be considered ourselves as we progress in age, as well as for our parents. This has been a great training experience. Wow. Dealing with difficult decision making and tasks, but being supported in this way is phenomenal, even if we're leaving. I must admit that I find this transition stuff overwhelming. We have been thinking about this for some time as our son is 16 now, and we have been working on this transition IEP. We are fortunate that we have a great IEP team, and I'm glad that we have this transition university program available. This is just what I need to really calm my fears and focus on what we as a family need to do to help our son transition to adulthood. I like that we need to focus on the dream first and then we work backwards. I was letting my own thoughts overwhelm me and this course will help me put things in focus and begin the plan. And that is, we, we um, book in this course talking about the end in mind and how to focus on making a plan and helping to make goals obtainable in that plan. And so that's what she's speaking of here. Um, finally, this was a great class. I enjoyed the format of this class with it being self-paced, but also very laid out. Other online courses can be a bit difficult to navigate, but this was very simple. The information provided was extremely useful. As an educator, often important 
Often information is provided using educational language. While that is appropriate, sometimes things can be said far more simplistically, which in turn assist me as an educator in how I present things to parents. This course also provided many resources that I'm not afraid to pass on to parents. It can be difficult to pass on resources to parents knowing that they may have difficulty processing through the information. Everything was very parent friendly and I will definitely be looking for more courses through PEDSI. So again, I just wanted to share those things so you guys could see um, what other people thought and share you know, in their mind about um, Transition University. And so now I'm going to share a screen and show you what it looks like. This was our summer session, so this is not the fall session, but this will give you an idea of what it looks like when someone signs on to Transition University. Uh, you will notice at the top here that all of our um, screens that have text also have a voice overlay so that um, if individuals need it read to them that they can, they can certainly choose that. Um, I like it for me, just sometimes I get tired of reading, and so it's nice to have it read to me. Um, but it starts off this way, and over on the left-hand side of the screen are the five sessions and how they're laid out. So you can see the titles, and um, if you click on it, you can see all the pieces that are in each session. And um, I will say, you know, people always ask me, well, how long does a session take? And in general, a session, you can do a session in about an hour depending on how much you really get into some of, the, some of the pieces. You can spend a lot more time if you choose to. So each session starts off with um, an, an intro. The first one is, uh, is the directions on kind of what you're doing and that sort of thing. There's some welcomes here from VDOE and, and um, from our staff at PTSE. And then there's a lesson. Um, sorry, this on the screen, it looks really small, but this is a lot bigger. And this is uh, a presentation that's going to talk about what is transition and where do we start. And then it'll follow up. So sometimes there's um, something that goes right behind it that we mentioned. For example, in this one, there's a PDF about um, facts, uh, fast facts, tips for transition planning, which is downloadable for individuals as well, or they can print those things. Um, then, you know, there's, this is probably one of my favorite things in the course is this thing called a parent transition survey that people again can download, but it gives parents a, a way to kind of assess where you're at right now and what um, things might be next. And again, you can see something about developing a vision. We always, there's a, another little presentation here and then we always have a, a session at a section at the end of every session with a bunch of resources. This one has a little bit less, but most of them have an enormous amount and the resources can be clicked on and looked at. So this is where people can get lost in time. If you um, click on a lot of these and sometimes they click and you can go to a lot of things, but we try to tell people what this is so that they know if they want to turn, you know, go there or not. I will say that this So You're 18 is probably one of the most clicked things in that section. And finally, every session has a discussion board and we give um, people uh, a question. Sometimes it's divided up if you're the parent guardian or if you're an educator provider, and sometimes it's the same question. And then in this particular discussion for number one, you can see we had 65 discussions, individual discussion topics that were started, and those get replied to. And um, as a PTC staff person, I'm the one who monitors this, and so I reply to pretty much each one of those and then monitor if there are questions and things. But if you click on that, you can see the ones that people started and um, there's, there's tons of those, there's 65 of those. And so our, act, our discussion board is very active and I think families really, um, and providers really learn a lot from that. And so each session sort of follows that same pattern. And you can see, you know, in session two, we, we start with transition IPs and so we have a a presentation here from Marianne Moore at VDOE. We talk about um, what about transition. We even include something on transition for students with 504s. That's a, I think that's a text page. We're talking about that so that gets read. Um, and it, it just, you know, continues on. There's always some downloadable information. There's always a discussion. This session, um, again, you can see the resource page kind of picks up a little bit more. And um, there's a lot of things here about transition 
assessments and some of these tools take you to actual list of various free transition assessments that you can even use at home or share with your team. Uh, as people go through it, they can navigate here to the left or they can click the next on the bottom. And um, let's see if there's anything else as we kind of scroll through. This is the session on decision making. So you'll see uh, planning for the future. You'll see topics around that, turning 18 in general. And then the pathways to independent living. And when I, we have a different definition of independent living in Transition University, which I will you know, let you um, explore as you get to that but um, we have presentations from Wilson Workforce talking about the great things that they do. This uh, pocket resume, because we talk about employment in this section, the pocket resume gets uh, a lot of good feedback. People really um, enjoy that and have found it, it's a fillable PDF and have found it very, very helpful for, for their child or students. And um, again, you've got, you know, the four, we have four-year college listings and, and their disability services offices and stuff. And um, you have the resources page again, again outlined and that page is um, something that we allow, and we make it downloadable so people don't have to keep up with all the links. They can download the PDF and be able to access those in the future. And then finally, we end with the, some more pathways to independent living. And this is where you see stuff like the Centers for Independent Living, Medicaid waivers, Social Security, um, and this participating, how to connect and participate, I'm sorry, transportation, connect and participate in your community. This next go around, we've added quite a bit with housing. We've been partnering with the housing folks at DBHDS to, um, to do a, a short presentation on that so families in a family-friendly way to access. And then um, the discussion, information on a course certificate, everyone who completes this course fully um, gets a course certificate they will be able to access it at the top of their page when they sign in, as well as it gets emailed to them. Uh, so I wanted to just give you guys, a, a, like I said, a, a view of that in terms of um, what it looks like and how that, um, how, how it looks to families when they, when they get there. So let me flip back over here real quick and finish this up. Um, slideshow, we did the how, whoops. And then I wanted to give you this information. This, uh, on this slide, you can see the fall offering, which is October the 11th through November 23rd. Those are the weeks it will be open. Uh, we probably, because that comes up really close to Thanksgiving, a lot of times there's a buffer bill on the end that we'll add on. So it probably will be extended if people need it. Um, we see people are needing that all the way through until after Thanksgiving. The, the link is there. It's basically, if you can remember, HTTPS, and then it's Fall 2020 Transition University with the .eventbrite.com, or you can go to our website and find that um, a little bit easier. But I really do encourage people to, to check it out. If you find it's not for you, um, that's fine, and you, you know, can certainly don't have to finish it, but I, I would really encourage you to check that out. We, um, anybody from you know, who's a provider educator, but also especially those parents, whether your child's young and you want to start learning about it now, or whether your child is past the age of, uh, is even out of school and you think maybe you missed some things and you want to come back and catch those things. It definitely um, is helpful to all of those age ranges and those people in between. So that is all I've got there. I'm going to stop and um, I'm not sure if there are questions that you want me to take, Renee, or if you guys are ready to go to something else. I am going to give folks a few moments. I don't see anything popping up just yet, but folks, please go ahead and type your questions into the chat box, and I will be checking that and relaying those to Tammy. Sean Campbell said, this is amazing, and I agree. Thanks, guys. It, it really is. It really is something I, I, I have a lot of ownership over, I guess, because I put so much heart and soul into making it um, parent friendly and, and, and useful because I am a parent of a, of a 22 year old with autism. And so um, I, I really wanted it to be something that uh, had, had resources in it that I knew were useful. 
I do see there was a question about um, the impact of COVID and, and will it talk about that in relation to these services? Uh, yes, it will be mentioned several times in different ways. Uh, the information will remain the same, but then there will be information that targets um, what is current at that moment. And again, it will be current at the moment we open the course and, or that session opens, because I can, I can add to it until that session opens. So within the, you know, once a session is open, there may be things that change in our world. As you guys know, right now there's a lot of changes very quickly. Um, there may be things that change in our world based on, you know, that, that may not be there at that very moment, but it will be as up to date as we can make it for sure. So I'm going to put my, um, someone asked, you know, my, my grandson is starting high school. Should I start this now or should I wait? I would highly encourage you to start it if they're starting high school. The, what I have found over the years and working in the transition area is, you know, as a parent, I felt like I had a really, by the time my son got to high school, I felt like I had a really good grasp on IEP stuff. It took me a while early on, you know, I was, it was rough, um, but I felt like I had a really great gap, grasp on IEP and I'm like, okay, our IEPs are kind of going and here we go. And then we started talking about the adult services world and the adult world and what happens after high school. And it is a lot to think about and it's a lot to digest. And so I know for my own self, when I attended a training on um, let's say Medicaid waivers, it took me three or four or five times to hear that information before I felt like I understood even a glimpse of what was really happening there. And I'm still learning. I am still learning about Medicaid waivers and Social Security um, because it changes. Those things, it's, it's not like the, the special education law that, that has been the same for quite a while now and the process has been the same. Um, these adult service systems are very unique and they change quickly and they, um, they each in, operate differently and they have different eligibility requirements and those kind of things. So I encourage families to jump in as soon as they can and many families take this course over and over again because they go through it and then another six months go by or so because we offer it three times a year and another six months will go by and they'll say, oh man, that's come up now and now I really want to hear that again. I want to hear more, I want to hear that information or I want to see what information you have now around um, DARS. And so um, they, they jump on again and they may, you know, skim through some things at that point that may not be useful, but some they'll go back and go over and over again on some other things. And so I would, I would say definitely take it as early as you feel like you're ready to start thinking about those, those life after high school type things. Because if you, if you know how to plan, even that first section on how to start planning and how to make your IEPs that you're doing right now add up to something at the end, um, if you can start that early, you're gonna have a better outcome. If you're gonna start that process of really having a, a plan for your IEPs, um, instead of it being one after another after another that don't really add up to something when high school's over. So um, we, we really try to work on that. As I said, we book in the whole course around that whole concept. And so I do encourage folks to, to jump in and at least begin grasping that part of things on how to, how to plan appropriately. Um, someone says, do you recommend taking these courses multiple times to keep up with the changes like every few years while my son is in high school? I think it, it would depend. Um, I definitely, you know, I, for me, I'm a person who, as I said, needs to hear it multiple times. And for me, it's easier to go to one place to keep up with all the changes than to have to go to multiple places. And so if that's you, I would encourage you, yeah, take it, you know, come back through it. If you go and you say, I want to see what's changed in this section or that section, you can. Um, you can ask questions in the discussion board still, um, you know, I don't encourage you skipping around the first time through because you don't know the flow and how that's working. But going forward, you know, you can certainly jump in and, and um, skip around. It is very different than it was the very first time we did it. So if, you know, for example, if an individual says to me, I took it, you know, back in that very first time in 2019, 
I would definitely say jump back in because it is very different and continues to be um, grown and changed as, as we you know, realize different services or things pop up or again, as things you know, change. So it's, it's definitely you know, open for people to do that. I'm going to slide my um, email in the chat box and you are welcome to contact me um, at Pizzi, if you ever you know need need that, um, you can also just contact our main office, and they can put you in touch with me. Um, and our, our you can go to our website and find all our contact information. So um, thanks again, Renee. Thanks again for the IFSP Council for having us. I hope it's been helpful for families, and um, hope you have a rest. The rest of your meeting goes well. Thank you so much, Tammy. This has been absolutely amazing. And if I haven't been nearly sold before, I'm definitely sold now. I need to register for this. I think it's time. So um, thank you so much. And I've seen there were a few other, um, between some of the questions, there were a few other comments too that were just really nice. Like um, Rebecca Stickler said that she's taken the course twice and highly recommends taking it. She learned a lot and has a lot of resources. So um, a lot of really nice comments and um, great presentation and a lot of really great info. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to uh, log out now. You guys have a good evening. All right. Take care.